Okay, so our key news story of the week, and this one is quite fascinating. Obviously, our DNA 4 GPUs released this week. Um, we also had uh, the official unveiling of FSR4 upscaling, which Alex did a video on. And uh, even from preliminary testing, this is looking really, really impressive. Now, interesting thing happened uh, the day before we, we filmed this, which is to say that... Um, uh, AMD strongly hinted that Sony was involved in the uh, creation of FSR4. And um, we've actually had the chance to get some comments from Mark Cerny on this. He's answered some questions that we put forward there. And um, the results are highly enlightening. And um, I guess the key point is that um, the, the headline statement, so to speak, is that Sony is looking to integrate some kind of iteration of FSR4 into um, 2026 um, PlayStation 5 Pro titles. But there's a lot more to it than that. Um, Oliver, we want to take up the story? Yeah, yes, yeah. so this is really encouraging, I think. Basically, in our comments and <laughs> our Q&A with Mark Cerny here, he's suggesting that indeed for 2026 titles, that they're going to implement basically the neural network from FSR4 into a version of PSSR for the PS5 Pro here uh, for 2026 titles. And I think this is really encouraging ultimately beyond any like technical aspect of it, because like we've seen from the first few months of PS5 Pro titles, PSSR is a very imperfect solution for AI upscaling relative to solutions from competitors. Um, it is competitive in some respect with FSR2 in a lot of titles, but and it can be a fair deal better in some scenarios, but it's not doing a good job of delivering a consistently clear, smooth, stable image in motion and in stills. Um, we've seen some improvements from launch with new versions of PSSR, but they haven't really improved on, I would say, like the fundamental areas of weakness with PSSR. They've more improved on like SSR resolve or like the foliage is touched up a bit, like some of the more egregious areas of the technique, but they haven't really brought it up to parity with those other techniques or, or anywhere close to that uh, that level, really. But FSR 4, on the other hand, was super impressive. I mean, I saw this in person with Alex at CES. We spent about 20 minutes poking around in Ratchet and Clank. Alex is obviously an expert at finding the various issues in that title. And obviously Alex's uh, coverage since then has shown that the technique is super impressive. And I was kind of worried here that the PS5 Pro might not have the performance to pull off FSR 4 because the machine learning performance of RDNA 4 seems greater than the PS5 Pro here. Um, but it sounds like a version should be achievable in the hardware. At least that's what they're aiming for. Their language is um, a little bit tentative here, I would say, but that's certainly their aim here. So I think ultimately, you know, with PS5 Pro here, a lot of our concerns, I feel like we're localized that initial batch of PS5 Pro titles. And I think we made a point of saying this, which is that the hardware is quite compelling, but the technique they were using for machine learning upscaling in that hardware was not quite up to snuff compared to competitor solutions. And what we've seen from that hardware in terms of the ray tracing acceleration, which we know is quite similar to the ray tracing acceleration that's present in RDNA 4, was actually pretty decent. Like we are seeing ray tracing, enhanced ray tracing in a number of titles, including the recent Monster Hunter Wilds and Assassin's Creed Shadows. Both those titles have RT reflections on PS5 Pro, whereas the base consoles don't have RT reflections. So yeah, mm -hmm. I'm really encouraged to see that. I think it sets Sony up really well for PS6 potentially getting these technologies in place for um, their next generation console early effectively. And yeah, I'm really, really encouraged to see this. I'm really, really glad to see this. I was wondering if maybe FSR4 in some capacity would be able to run in PS5 Pro here. It seems like that is indeed the case and it should mean really good things, hopefully for image quality and PS5 Pro software. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, essentially, Alex, there, there are differences in terms of the machine learning implementation which is custom on Sony and obviously AMD specific on AMD. Um, do you have any sort of comments on that? On on you know this this concept of moving the model across from um, FSR four to to PlayStation there? Yeah, there's uh, we have some great confirmation of some things that I speculated on, and I'm willing to say, yeah, I was wrong about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> they uh, Mark Cerny um, uh, makes mention that the uh, PlayStation five Pro's 300 tops figure. Uh, for its integer eight uh, kind of theoretical stop speed there is actually in reference to it without sparsity. doesn't make mention of it um, actually supporting sparsity on the PlayStation 5 Pro. Um, and sparsity basically was a way, at least NVIDIA, uh, back in the day when I think it was when Ampere came out that they revised the DLSS 2 model at the time and they improved the speed specifically on Ampere and above. And that's kind of what got into like the sub 
uh, one millisecond range, at least for that DLSS CNN model. Uh, so we have a confirmation there that uh, PS5 Pro uh, uh, does have 300 tops of int eight, which would put it behind without sparsity, which would put it a little bit behind RDNA four for those calculations. Based on some AMD patents that are circulating, it appears that we may be seeing some sort of like hybridized model here, uh, targeting RDNA 4 for FSR 4 that may be somewhere in between and utilize, utilizing features of both the CNN and a transformer model, um, but it specifically may be accelerated by FP8 instructions, which is something that um, wasn't commented at all on in uh, any of the PS5 Pro disclosures, uh, but it is something that is new, for example, to RDNA 4. Uh, so the, the the whole tentative wording here that Oliver talked about and the fact that it's like 2026 tells me like, or at least my conjecture would be that the timelines once again are not like completely lined up. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, Sony had to shoot first and they had to target different <laughs> hardware at first. Like mm -hmm. the size of the CU would be a lot bigger if it was more like the CUs we'd see in an RDNA 4 GPU that supported maybe more uh, instructions. Um, so maybe as conjecture here, Sony doesn't support the specific acceleration, which currently FSR4 is using on RDNA4 on PC. So there's going to be maybe an elongated porting process to get it up to snuff in terms of quality and performance, because that's another thing that it, uh, Cerny mentions in this interview is that um, they want to have it being used in titles that are targeting 60 FPS. If it exceeds a certain millisecond threshold, 60 FPS becomes a lot less viable, right? So um, I'm very curious to see what the end product looks like, if it does look like FSR 4 in all of its aspects. Uh, to say mm -hmm. the least, FSR 4 for me was amazing looking in person, seeing it running. Uh, I only get, was able to try it in the Nixies games, essentially. Um, because that's where FSR 3.1 support was just perfect. Uh, I had trouble with other titles actually, um, but there it worked really, really well. And the quality was incredible, really stable, more stable than uh, DLSS 4 in some areas that I pointed out in the video. And with less artifacting too, I also showed off DLSS 4 transformer model can show striations in images that I kind of also pointed out in the uh, ray reconstruction video I did. Uh, so mm. it's like very stable and really good at anti-aliasing, which I really like to see because I, I actually mm -hmm. prefer images that are even a bit softer with better anti-aliasing than those <laughs> that are like a lot sharper but have trouble with anti-aliasing. Yeah. So I actually really like uh, FSR4's resolve quite a bit. Um, and I would like to see if PSSR could get to that kind of level of stability and quality that I saw there. Um, but I guess we're going to have to wait like a, like a year or so. To, to see what that mm -hmm. might look like. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, indeed. I mean, um, Oliver, you were asking Mark what the you know the short and long term goals are with the, with Amethyst, and we got some quite interesting information there. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like in the short term, their goal is basically to develop mostly neural network architectures here for game graphics, um, and that certainly was a, an area of some conversation when I spoke to Mark back in um, back in October of last year. And then in the long term, their goal is basically to work on hardware designs, which makes sense given that Amethyst, I believe, uh, started about a year ago, that collaboration, they said. And looking right. forward, that would certainly presumably be involved to some degree in the creation of, let's say, a next generation PlayStation console and presumably would not factor as much into the hardware design, if at all, I, I would assume, of the PS5 Pro. That was probably locked down before most of this Amethyst collaboration started. So I would hope that in the short term, we're going to see something like, like Alex said, some kind of variation on FSR 4 for the PlayStation 5 Pro console, and then presumably for the PlayStation 6 as well down the line, and then some uh, additional level of hardware collaboration to hopefully improve the state of future Sony hardware here. And I think certainly at least this as, as a first output potentially from this Amethyst collaboration between Sony and, and AMD here, uh, seeing FSR 4 on PC certainly indicates that perhaps this will be a fruitful partnership, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting um, a disclosure there that they're looking for a more ideal hardware architecture for machine learning. So, you know, um, 
obviously a collaboration with the intent of producing something that applies to all markets there. Something which also caught my eye was um, uh, a hint, I guess. I mean, we were basically asking if the um, denoising demo that, that you guys saw, and I guess it was in the, is it the toy shop yes, demo? Yeah. Um, you know, it, was that a part of Amethyst? Mark Cerny says, all I can say is stay tuned. <laughs> There's a lot of opportunity with our Amethyst collaboration. We know that ray tracing is a huge part of the graphics future. So from my perspective, it's quite interesting that, um, well, let's let's be clear here. AM, um, NVIDIA has laid down basically almost like the roadmap for um, uh, ray tracing and AI features. And they've kind of paid off. I mean, ray reconstruction is pretty excellent. Um, you know, the whole ray tracing suite they've come up with, the integration with ML, it's, it's all sort of paying off. And then we've got Amethyst, which is essentially uh, producing very similar technologies. Is there any sort of final words on this, Alex? Because it's, uh, it's, it's quite intriguing to see this come out. Yeah, I mean, well, um, just in general, uh, the, we know the cost of running all these ML things on the GPU is still expensive, even with proper acceleration. Um, we saw, you know, RDNA 4, RX 9070 XT had a, I would say, measurable performance cost to running it. Uh, yep. Then you go over on the NVIDIA side and in a game that has kind of like lackluster, I would describe it, um, quality of denoising. If you turn on ray reconstruction there, mm -hmm. uh, you'll often find that ray reconstruction and definitely the transformer model is a lot more expensive than normal uh, uh, denoising. Uh, so you're getting a much higher quality, but it's also more expensive. Uh, and that's one thing that I'm very curious to see based upon this uh, this set of questions and answers from Mark Cerny here, how much of that is like realistically portable to games on the console? Because there's just, just many more constraints there for performance that where on a PC you can say like, eh, I'll be with VRR, G-Sync, MFG, whatever, you know, like yeah. you, you just do all, you just like throw all these other <laughs> things on top to try and make it worthwhile, right? Uh, whereas on console, it's like, no, nah, we got to hit like a 60 V-Sync, right? You know, so it's a, it's a different yeah. environment. So I'm very curious to see what that means to that. But for the, the, uh, for the more long-term future, I'm extremely happy now that FSR 4 in some form is going to be coming to PSSR, even if it ends up like not being all the way there for the first implementation. We at least know that PS6 will definitely have the hardware based upon what we see in RDNA 4 to run it in full, you know, big form, whatever. So uh, mm -hmm. good times ahead. Well, you would assume that PS6 would be using some custom variant of UDNA, uh, which is the which is the next generation architecture. So you know, exciting times ahead. We know almost nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs>